Tricky pronunciation on Northern Lights side. Uh, Nathan Bumrau and Sully Gominian. along with Alex Russell and here we go this is pool play we have Northern Lights versus Utah Avalanche and we're about to get brooms up in just a couple seconds here we go two of the top teams at the tournament Utah Avalanche and Northern Lights Utah a really drive heavy team and Northern Lights clinical passing and a great beater game so let's see how these two match up and we'll have this game on the call in just a little bit will be Utah Avalanche starting with the Quaffle in the hands of George Williams, their keeper. Blanchard and Saltzman are the beaters for Northern Lights as George Williams takes on the opening drive here. Passing it off to Matt Williams. Dane Saltzman pressing all the way up. George Williams, you can take evasive action here. Saltzman, clear, but Williams drops the Quaffle picked up by Northern Lights and a quick beat there by Anthony Snap to recover possession. Williams with the ball back in his hands. Anthony Snap and Michael Vong, the beaters for Utah Avalanche. Vong, certainly one of the best bludger handlers in the tournament. Matt Williams taking a drive, unfortunately only finding the hands of the Northern Lights chaser. And off we go. Satorius with the easy goal there. Beaters clearing a the lane there. Blanchard and Saltzman. Saltzman throwing back with Vaughn, pressing all the way up to try and grab it. He's gonna make it. Can't make the catch though. And Saltzman will recover control. There's still more bludger action as Anthony Snap now retains control for Avalanche. And now Matt Williams here out on the right wing. Back to George Williams. Vong and Snap with control. Williams, a great driving keeper. And another Williams, Matt Williams as well. Oh, that's a nice hit. Matt Williams shakes him off. Blanchard right there to take, to take the beat. George Williams, a pass all the way over to Sierra Whipple Pageant and that is good. So Utah Avalanche tying the score, 10 apiece now. So Wyatt Brasher with the tackle, but not quite enough to slow down Williams there. So it's 10 all here, Satorius with the ball, Blanchard tapping out Whipple Pageant, tapping out Williams too. Unrau all over Michael Vong, and Satorius blocks the beat. Let's see what he can do. And the shot will go just over the right hoop, no good. And possession now safely back with Avalanche. Blanchard with a slip there, but he will have no consequence as Northern Lights retain bludger control. It's George Williams here. It is 10 all as Vong misses the beat, allowing Owner out to press. Back to George Williams here. Vong with it. The smart fist, George Williams is beat, and that will end the drive there for Avalanche. And there's gonna be a 
referee discussion here. It may have been a bludger-related incident off the quaffle. Yeah, it looks like there was some, some stuff happening with Michael Bonk putting his fist up. And, yeah, let's see, let's see what... what yeah, they're talking about it. So, it, it's, it may be that Michael Bonk put his fist up while the ball was still in the air. I'm not sure if that was the call, but we'll see what happens here. If you're just tuning in now, it's 10 apiece here. Northern Lights and Utah Avalanche, two of the top teams here at the Western Championship Cup going head-to-head -head here in pool play on day one of this tournament. So far, both sides looking very evenly matched. Northern Lights able to stifle the drives of Avalanche so far and really create counterplay of their own. So long discussion here as the referees discuss what happened with Michael Vong and his bludger. Vong certainly one of the best beaters out here. Um, really physical, a great throwing arm, and certainly one of the most fearsome carriers of a bludger out here um, in Torrance today. So always a joy to watch him play and a joy to watch him blow up plays. It does seem like both of these teams have very, very strong beater pairs, at least out there right now. Most definitely. From what I've seen today, both of these teams really rely on their beaters to open opportunities and kind of force the opponent into a big mistake. So let's see how they match up and kind of comes away with the upper hand. and Unruh now have Bludger control for Northern Lights, but but Austin Wallace is right there with Snap next to him. Snap beat out by Blanchard now, and Satorius to Vercher. The shot will not go, and from the ground, there's a pass over to the right, who's scooped up by George Williams. Clear air in front of him, but Blanchard's hustling back here, and blocking the beat is George Williams, and in for the flush, but but the goal is being called no good. Tommy Brown with the signal for a no good goal. From where I saw, it looked like the bludger only hit the quaffle, but we'll see what the call is. It, from, from our angle, it looked like George Williams blocked that bludger, but we will see what the referee decision is. This would put, if good, um, this goal would put Avalanche up two to one. So. There is a debate going on about referee calls here as the beat on George Williams is being reconsidered here. The goal is no good. So it is still Goal counted no good as the as to, head referee Tommy Brown deeming the beat to have hit George Williams. And here is Wyatt Vercher, Northern Knights keeper, dishing it off. Mint, who does not score, off the bottom of the bar and out. And they're calling the goal good, so... So, Solomon Gaminiak with the shot, and there is a another referee discussion as they decide whether the ball actually went in. It seemed to have hit the bottom of the center hoop, and took a bounce so we'll see if that goal is called good and more referee discussions here as all of these possessions have resulted in contested goals that seem to be needing referee intervention to resolve so on we go here I believe as the goal is going to be called yeah, the Avalanche players lobbying for the goal to be no good, but oh, it does the count. Goal is called good. So. so after the debate, the goal is good, off the rim and in for Solomon Gaminiak, and Northern Lights takes a 20 to 10 lead. Michael Vong and Anthony Snap, without control, trying to get it back from Jake Malloy and Nathan Unrau. 
and in at keeper is Cameron Bombauer. Off to Braden McLean. Sierra Whipple pageant. The pass cannot, she, she can't quite find her option behind hoops. And Wyatt Rocher retains possession. So Northern Lights with a slim one goal lead here. Both sides having very promising possessions with a lot of referee intervention early on. A lot of stoppages. A lot of, a lot of back and forth games so far. Definitely some strong defense that we're seeing. There's a long beat from Michael Vaughn. Oh, a block from Wyatt Rocher. Can he get it to go? Yes. It did look like Rocher was beat on the leg during that play, but we'll see what the refs call. It may have, the beat from Vaughn may have bounced off of the quaffle and onto Rocher's leg. But if the goal stands, that certainly would be a very impressive finish through three or four avalanche defenders from Wyatt Rocher. And yet another referee intervention here on this goal. There have been four goals scored in this game, and I believe three have required referee discussions. So a very, sl a very slow game, a lot of stoppages early on, but here we are with Northern Lights leading by one goal, and it may be two, depending on the decision from Tommy Brown. Goal is called no good as Vercher was beat before, and that will be a nullified goal. And Northern Lights now only with a two to one lead. Here we are with here we are with Avalanche with possession here, taking the ball across the midline. Cameron Vombauer to. Braden McLean wrapped up here by Michael Mendelssohn, and there's a tangle on the floor. Cameron Bombar scooping it up again and a beat there, but it was after the play is over, and now Northern Lights is going to retain the quaffle in a very promising position. Now resetting. Oh, the block. The and another stoppage, but in the background there. Nick Monson with a block from Michael Vaughn. And now Cameron Baumbauer noticing the lane driving all the way through. The pass to Sierra Whipple pageant. Oh no, it's not Sierra Whipple pageant. It is. No, it is. Uh, no, it's not. It is. Number 27. Amber Zener. So that is a good goal for Avalanche. And it is two all. Jake Malloy escorting Mendelssohn up the pitch. Very close, and Michael Vong taking the initiative and beating out Malloy. Oh, another beat from Vong. That's opening the lane for Braden McLean. Takes it all the way with ease on that one and just puts the clopper right through the small hoop. So Michael Vong blowing up the play and creating the lane for Braden McLean to take advantage. 3 to 2 Avalanche now in front. Looks like we have some new beaters in for Avalanche. Adam Cyril on as he blocks David Saltzman's beat and pressing all the way up forcing the forcing Wallace to halt his progress. Wallace sees a blunder fly behind him. Now he now here he goes on the attack. Wallace cannot find Alicia Breyer but an, yet another stoppage here has, and I'm not sure, Alex, what the stoppage was for. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I couldn't quite see what was going on. And Coming out, but otherwise no further action here. New beater coming in for Avalanche. It 
is Cameron Baumbauer here with the Waffle. Cyril facing off with Nathan Unrau. Saltzman pressured here by Andrew Tita. Baumbauer getting away from the wrap from Salo Haney. And back to Baumbauer. Oh, almost intercepted by Wallace. Baumbauer now. Oh, the one-handed grab there. Interrupting the play. That's Andrew Stevenson. Now all the way to the other end. Tahini for the flush. That's good. And it's three apiece. Couldn't quite see what happened there. Did you get a eye on that banner? So... That was a really great play from Andrew Stevenson, Northern Lights keeper. The one-handed grab on Cameron Bombar's shot, taking it all the way up the pitch himself, and then the dish to Salehini for the goal for Northern Lights. But another stoppage. So this is, I think, this is like the fifth goal of the game that's been contested again. And it's going to be a throw after beat against Nathan Unro. So. That will be a bludger turnover, and now Northern Lights forced to operate with only David Saltzman to defend. So the goal will be good, I believe. But now Avalanche looking to be as aggressive as they can with only Saltzman back on defense. The lone beater there for Northern Lights. And Cameron Vombauer is certainly smelling blood in the water here. Cyril and Andrew Tita now sizing up Saltzman. Bertram back to Vombauer around Heaney. Saltzman trying to take on two, but he can't do so. And he manages to save the possession. So Andrew Stevenson now trying to get around Porter Bertram in his own half. Pass Anna Christina. Saltzman destroying the beaters on his own, but he is beat out. Now Solomon Gaminiak taking the quaffle on the drive, seeing the one, oh, the mid-range shot from right outside the keeper zone is good there for Northern Lights. There's a beater scrum in the backfield here as Saltzman takes out Adam Cyril. So, and still a beater in the box. And David Saltzman is really holding down the defense here for Northern Lights. No good goals. And now the penalty has elapsed. And that's a huge play from David Saltzman. Oh, the dish to Anna Christina, and that's gonna go. Ian Quincy with a great pass on that, just seeing the open, open receiver. Quincy, as he was taken to the ground, finding Anna Christina. Wallace now, oh, running right into Cyril. That's not gonna go well, but Dominiak picking up the quaffle. Just slowly walking it up the pitch. Oh, all the way over to Drew Satorius, and that is good. Bludger flying over here as David Sultan throws back. And another stoppage. And a timeout. Ball was thrown before the, bee, before the whistle. So it is five to three, Northern Lights in front, and a really crucial series of possessions there for Northern Lights, operating with only one beater, and David Saltzman showing up and holding things down on defense preventing any goals during that, that period, waiting for, for Nathan Unruh to get out of the penalty box. And he has done that immaculately. So Northern Lights ahead by one goal here and the timeout called by Utah Avalanche. So far, these teams looking very closely matched and the driving offense of Utah Avalanche has not been as effective as it was in prior matches here as yeah, Northern Lights has found an answer. Absolutely. Uh, one of Utah's biggest strengths is their size and ability to go through a whole lot of defenses, just kind of carrying the ball and then just dunking on a lot of smaller teams. But Northern Lights is really up to the task, and their beaters have especially made it difficult for Utah to really drive straight through their defense. Utah's going to have to find ways to open up and clear more paths if they want to really maximize their score. Oh, gotcha. So it goes like that. So, upon resumption of play, I think David Saltzman will have two bludgers available to him. One of them, he should throw back to, to Nathan Unrow. So, there's going to be a couple more seconds here of this timeout. 
and the player should return to the pitch shortly. So far, Andrew Stevenson, one of the standouts on defense here for Northern Lights. And on the other side, Cameron Baumbauer really taking up the mantle of Waffle Carrier here, but he has subbed out and in his place. Ian Quincy, a former Austin Outlaws and Baylor player, in at keeper for the Utah Avalanche. 15 seconds! 15 seconds to resumption of play here, and the team's very close to match. Northern Lights ahead by one goal. Yes, he is. So Saltzman is going to be over on the sideline here with two bludgers available. So two bludgers available over here. And David Saltzman will be will need to bring one of them back to his partner upon the restart. Andrew Tita and Adam Cyril right there on him. We might have some action here upon the restart. Oh, the catch from David Saltzman! A double beat, but the catch from David Saltzman there unfortunately cannot preserve control. Porter Bircham, oh, a long beat attempt from Unruh does not make it. Ana Cristina racing over, but cut off there by uh, Wallace. So Satorius, oh, it was not Wallace, but rather Wyatt Brusher, but Satorius now sauntering was up, his way up the field, taking it easy as Unrau and Blanchard look to recover control. Over to Brusher, beat there by Nathan Unrau as Josiah Johnson gets taken out. The goal does not go and recovered there by Ian Quincy. So 5-4 here, Northern Lights up. But Porter Bertram here, formerly of Utah, looking to answer. So Ray Taylor beat out there, but... Oh, here comes Drew Satorius with Blanchard to accompany him. Beat by Ray Taylor. Oh, but mishandled there. Cannot quite... Re can't... Yes, so... Dominia can't quite reel that pass in. And that possession goes by the wayside for Northern Lights. Quincy now with the ball. Ray Taylor and Josiah Johnson in a beater for the Avalanche here as Unrau and Blanchard have control. Quincy over to Matt Williams. Unrau trying to get around Josiah Johnson. There's a pass all the way over to Braden McLean, but it's only going to find... The clock was still out of bounds. The beaters fight for control. And it's still going to be in the oh, hands and of Fiona Ruddle. And Braden McLean is playing footsie on the ground there with the quaffle. And it's going to be recovered, I believe, as the beaters come to help by Wyatt Brasher. Finally takes some beaters intervening in that play to bring it to an end. But Braden McLean was really continuing that offense and trying to recover that quaffle really ripped it out of the hands of the Northern Lights chaser and had a chance to score there, but couldn't quite capitalize. Malloy and Blanchard in. Oh, the missed beat from Ray Taylor. Oh, the beat by Blanchard on him. So Jake Malloy is now going to have all the bludgers. <laughs> oh, the pass mishandled there. On our right, can't quite handle it. Blanchard clear. No, Blanchard is off room. So here comes Utah Avalanche with Ian Quincy, but another stoppage. So a whole lot of beater action there on that play. As Jake Malloy and Northern Lights had the third bludger on the ground, yet could not capitalize. So the score remains 50 to 40 in favor of Northern Lights. But Utah with the ball pending this referee decision. So this game has really lived up to its billing so far. Two very different teams with very different philosophies on offense. And they are trading blows with each other.
very early on here. And it's likely that we'll see these two teams in the playoffs tomorrow, potentially facing each other yet again. This matchup right here could really decide how seeding winds up tomorrow. It'll be really interesting to see kind of what happens the rest of the day and the first two games tomorrow. Are they uh, both undefeated, Alex? I know that, let's see. Um, I'm pretty sure Northern Lights, Northern Lights is 1-0. Right. Oh. They've played Aftershock and won that game. And Avalanche, I believe they also have only played one game. Okay. So both teams 1-0 and oh in the early going. This is their second game, and it's very hotly contested so far. 50-40 to 40 in favor of Northern Lights, and there's going to be a bludger turnover as Josiah Johnson gains possession. So Ray Taylor and Josiah Johnson now with possession. No. So the purple bludger is going to be placed all the way out on the other side of the field, and I believe Ray Taylor's going to have to run for that one. But... Ian Quincy with the Quaffle now subbing for George Williams and Utah Avalanche with control. Josiah Johnson and Ray Taylor accompanying George Williams up the field. George Williams is such a lethal driver. We'll see if his beaters can create a lane here. Oh, and they run 1.5 here as Josiah Johnson goes in for the tackle. The ball finds Matt Williams who can't get it to go and quickly picked up there by Drew Satorius on the other side of things. Satorius now pushing the pace, but quickly seeing Josiah Johnson halts his advance. Heaney now beat out by Josiah Johnson. Beat, Satorius is beat again by Josiah Johnson. Braden McLean, easy as pie all the way down the other end. A lot of beater trades right there at the middle of the field and a lot of chaos that ensued, but Avalanche comes away with the goal and it's now 5-5. And it's Josiah Johnson, the Utah product, still a collegiate player who created that goal for the Avalanche there. So Austin Wallace here, beat by Johnson for share, can't reel the pass in, but the shot just a bit wide, Heaney, Trying to find the option right is clear, but here comes George Williams. Over to Matt was Jake Molloy right in his face. And that is going to be a turnover as Austin Wallace scoots up the errant pass. Porter Bertram marking up Wallace and they, the reset is not used as Wallace was pushed back across. 50 all here, Wallace but no look. Over to Wyatt Vercher for the good goal. Jake Malloy beat out by Nathan Liu, but Liu cannot recover control here as Blanchard quickly comes back to help. So it's Heaney with Wallace right, and Blanchard pressing. Oh, the bludgers hit each other in midair. So Matt Williams now, Jake Malloy pressing. George Williams right, Pat Bertram, yes. Bertram with a perfect cut to the small hoop there. Just found the opening in the defense, and George Williams just executed a perfect easy pass, and it's now tied up again. Six each. It is Saltzman and Monson in at Peter for Northern Lights, escorting Austin Wallace up the field. The all Lou pairing of Nathan and Danica on defense. Wallace to right, wrapped up quickly by Bertram and swarmed there at the hoop. There is a bludger scrum as all the bludgers are on the ground, but they have one back on defense, Northern Lights, as Mont. oh, George Williams with a truck. And So Michael Mendelssohn taken to the ground by George Williams as Williams was looking to get past him. Really big hit by George on that, but couldn't quite find the receiver for that pass. And I think it's going to wind up being a Northern Lights ball. It looked like that made its way out of bounds. We'll see what they decide. Probably 
have northern lights need to oh so it's going that. to be a george williams is taking off the green headband it looks like he might have received a yellow card here uh, dangerous play call from tommy brown tommy brown making that call so George Williams is going to be in the penalty box, and that is a huge loss for Utah Avalanche. Williams, a very competent driver and a great stopper on defense. Without him, they will need to do a lot more on defense. Williams, a huge presence there as Austin Wallace is looking to exploit the gap that Williams once filled. So Porter Burcham taking up the point chaser role here. Wallace passes it off to Fiona Ruddle. Back to Wallace, and there's a friendly fire beat there, but Wallace is clear. The two lose on defense for Utah Avalanche holding control. Wallace trying to drive all the way around the flank. Nathan Lou is right on hand. That's going to be a beat, but Wallace is still has the quaff on his hands. The pass to the left hoop, and right on hand is Alicia Breyer for the finish. There is a clear beat there as Saltzman blocks the bludger. And Matt Williams now passes to the newly returned George Williams. Northern Lights now up by one goal, 70-60. The missed beat by Nathan Unrau. Porter Bertram smelling blood here. The pass cannot quite find Harry Anderson. But back to Bertram. Can he finish this time? No. Over to Williams. Matt Williams through the contact from Austin Wallace, no problem. Austin Wallace with some clear neck contact there. Uh, it'll be negated due to the goal. And very quick call here. So no need so for an extended Matt stoppage. So Matt Williams braving the neck contact there from Austin Wallace to jam the quaffle through the right hoop and that is going to be another game-tying goal for Utah Avalanche, really showing their physicality here, really showing what made this team dominate the match against Fog, and really showing their potential here with such a great driving offense here. So there's going to be a yellow card on Austin Wallace negated by the good goal. 7-all as we resume play. Wallace now subbing. Oh, the Porter Bertram dodges the beat from David Saltzman. Saltzman and Lou trade. And here comes Drew Satorius with one bludger behind for Avalanche. Here is Andrew Stevenson. Fiona Ruddle is beat, and now Cameron Vombauer with the quaffle, pressured by Solomon Dominiak, and Vombauer will just take things slowly. That's Michael Vong back. Right there, just hit the post of the left hoop. Unfortunate, and wound up with a turnover. So Vong back in now, replacing Nathan Liu. Vong now with Danica Liu as his partner. Von Bauer to McLean. Beat there by Nathan Unrau. There's a foul on the play. They continue playing. The block by Cameron Von Bauer. Still an advantage foul being called. The dish behind hoops to Carrie Anderson, but Solomon Dominiak falling on the loose quaffle. So there, there had been an advantage play called at least 10 seconds before the conclusion of that play. From what so, I saw, it looked like uh, Miniac had a little bit of a engage from behind when they went to make that tackle up top and might have, yep, looks like they're going to the box. So Gminiak is going to be in the penalty. So it looks I like their tackle on Brady McLean was from behind or otherwise not legal and they'll go to the box
certain there have been cards. Um, I believe there was one on George Williams, Utah Avalanche keeper, as well as one on Austin Wallace, Northern Lights keeper. So certainly a very physical game and the cards really proving that point. And Tommy Brown with the quaff in his hands, we'll see what he does with it. And I believe it's gonna be in the hands of Braden McLean. And if I remembered correctly, the Northern Lights beater had a yellow card at one point and they were playing down. Right, Nathan Unrau was yellow carded for, for a throw after beat, I believe. Jor uh, so now, oh, the kick beat, but Braden McLean continuing in the drive. Oh, Michael Vaughn with a jump dodge. Nathan Unrau's bludger goes flying. So, Nor so Utah Avalanche retaining possession and a good goal there from Braden McLean. Avalanche now up eight to seven. Blanchard on for David Saltzman here. Nathan Unrau and Joe Blanchard in at beater for Northern Lights. Vong beating out Nathan Unrau. Vong trying to continue the pressure. Does not get the beat on Gaminiak. Gaminiak all the way but cannot finish as their shot goes over the center hoop. And there's more beater action here as Michael Vong will grab his loose bludger. Facing off with Unruh out here. Oh, the catch from Michael Vong and the beat. Michael Vong blowing up the play. Blanchard needs to focus on Quaffle and he does so. Tapping out Braden McLean, tapping, tapping out Von Bauer, Michael Vong and he is, there's a, another foul, but Utah Avalanche could not have a care in the world. Braden McLean on the drive, wrapped up there by Gaminiak and by Andrew Stevenson. So there's a scrum on the ground, a foul has been called, and yet another example of these two teams really going at each other. And Utah Avalanche come away with control. The pass behind Hoops, oh, the beat there, really crucial beat from Jake Malloy. And there, and yet again, there had been a foul called for. That was I'd a, say, quite a long advantage play for Avalanche. There, they never gave up on that play, and even though they were playing, knowing there had been a foul committed, they just kept going, trying to score there. So we'll see what the call ends up being. Might have been. Possible it was another engage from behind. So Utah Avalanche up eight to seven, and the Seeker the Seekers are both getting ready to come on. And familiar sight over there as Porter Bertram readies himself for Snitch on the pitch. And the Snitch will be very, very important in such a close game. So Bertram will certainly be looking to pull as quickly as he can. And it's possible that the team that catches the snitch runs away with this game. And in really close games, that can certainly happen. So we'll see what happens here as the snitch on pitch is about to start. Last possession is incoming. And as of now, there is a foul to be yet to be called here as we, we now encounter Jesse Stevens in the booth. Hello. Checking in for Jesse Stevens. As we see this very competitive game, potential championship uh, highlight that might be coming up tomorrow. We'll see. This is this is who I have, Shannon, going to the championship. We'll see if I'm proved wrong. We will see. So referees still discussing the foul. There have been many stoppages in this game. It's been a very back and forth affair. Many stoppages, and yet another one here as we await the result of the advantage call here as the referees all had their advantage calls up in the air as for at least I'd say 20 seconds but Utah Avalanche continuing to play on. Is there any water over here that I can have someone throw at me during future game stoppages? <laughs> Coconut water? Water catch you easily. Yeah. Dan I want to seek against you and see what it's like. It looks oh. pretty interesting. I want to see Porter seek against Dan. Porter did. Porter caught Dan. Oh, really? Yeah. Good for after. Oh, yeah. It was, it was the catch. After a little it was, while. It was either. Uh, like, because. He was nudging. I was like this on the line. And they had already been like, Dan, stop stepping out. And he was like nudging me back. So I'm either going to fall on top of him or he's going to catch. And I'm like, I don't want to crush him. So I'm like, I can't move. 
sorry. I'm not gonna fall on him. That would be bad. Were you hurt? It looked like you were hurt at one point. Well, Hugo accidentally slapped me in the test. So, uh, tough. yeah. <laughs> Unclear what the foul was, but here we go, playing on with Anthony Snap and Michael Vaughn with control. Jake Malloy on defense. Ian Quincy pass. Monsieur Whipple Pageant. Malloy beat out by Vaughn. Whipple Pageant now driving. Oh, and that's gonna bounce and go through. It's off the post, and I think that is our 20-minute stoppage. Off the post and in for the Sierra Whipple pageant, and that's going to push the Avalanche lead to two goals as the 20-minute mark has arrived. I'm missing calls, but also calling things So Porter Bircham on the other side of this 20-minute mark will be facing off against Nick Marovich, who he, had, who he has already caught in this tournament in the Avalanche match against Fogg. So we'll see if Porter Bircham can deliver yet another pull here as this snitch can be very important in a two-goal game. Snitch is worth 35 points and the set score will be 160. So now approaching crunch time, Utah Avalanche pulling away with a two-goal lead. This is the biggest lead any team has had so far today. Previously, it was one goal. So the two-goal lead by Utah Avalanche is in fact the largest lead of the game. And that really demonstrates how closely matched these teams are. Absolutely. Uh, I do think that when Avalanche went up eight to seven, it was their first lead since possibly when they were, I'm not sure. Do you know if they were up one nothing at all? It, if not, it, I think Northern Lights were the opening goal, and then so, they quickly tied it soon after. It would be the Avalanche's first lead of the game was at eight to seven. But right so the now, countdown now they're as up two Dan scores. Yeah. yeah. So countdown now as this Dan is literally the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. is ready to snitch, and it will be. Um, so it will not be Porter Bircham seeking for Utah Ryan. Avalanche. Jake Malloy is now on beater. And here we go. Seekers are released. Malloy beating out. So, oh, the Seeker, Seeker is now out of bounds. And meanwhile, there's, a, there's chaos here as Dominiac is now driving. And that is, shot is good. So Blanchard bubbling up the snitch here, preventing the Utah Avalanche Seeker from approaching. But here comes Michael Vong. Michael Vong with a jump dodge. Tapping out Blanchard. So snap on hand to beat out Wyatt Vercher. Katie Williams here. Tangling with Dan Marovich and being pushed out of bounds. Three, two, one. So Wyatt Vercher here, one-on-one -on -one time with Marovich. We've got a bird's eye view of this right here. Oh, the, the grab oh, oh, oh. into the camera well goes. Wyatt Vercher does not get the grab and takes a tumble for his efforts. So on we go with Soleil Heaney. Resetting now back to Austin Wallace. Yeah. Camera's fine. Tripod is curved to the left. So an 80 to 90 back advantage here. I mean, 90 to 80 advantage here for Utah Avalanche. And the Seekers will be back Three, very two, shortly. One. Can we back the setup, Ryan? Yep. So good? Vercher cannot quite. The cap coming off his broom here as he battles with Dan Marovich. Out of bounds! Snitch out of bounds. Meanwhile, on the quaffle, Michael Vaughn with the beats, and there's a. There's chaos on the ground as Ian Quincy comes away with it. We can move this back a little more now. Dan, I'm gonna need you to like. Uh, camera, pull it back. I got a chair. You wanna get the tripod? All right, there we go. Uh, so camera moving back now after the 
pummel there from wide or chair. Just because with the uh, it needs to So Joe Blanchard here um, ready to tap oh, out like Harry that. Anderson. And snitch pull will be very important. It is a one goal lead for Utah Avalanche. And they, both teams, are going to fight tooth and nail for this snitch. <laughs> and Dan Marovich is certainly not an easy snitch to pull. <laughs> so another referee discussion, and the quaffle will be turned over. So Austin Wallace with possession now. Snitch on pitch time. Team separated by just one goal. And Utah Avalanche with a slim 90 to 80 lead here. Set score is 160. So a good amount of game time left. And the Seekers will be out again. And I believe it will be. Wyatt Bershare and Carrie yeah, Anderson just here. Like, just, like, so, resumption of play here. Seekers are going. And Blanchard is going to quickly tap out Anderson, leading Bershare one on one with Marovich. Ball on the far side of the field. Bershare really pushing Marovich around, but he can't make the breakthrough. Just shoving Marovich all over the pitch is Wyatt Bershare as Salehini did. Oh, the beat there from Anthony Snap, the quick turnaround. And the snap beat there by Anthony Snap, taking out the possession. Oh, Blanchard beating out Snap. Vong now exchanging. Now Gaminiak. Oh, really close. Really, really close from Solomon Gaminiak. Cannot quite get the pull. Anderson stop, back stop, in, stop. but. So Carrie Anderson and Solomon Gaminiak really going for the snitch here as the, as Austin Wallace now all the way through to Salahini for the for the dish and goal. Oh dear, what has happened here? As Dan Marovich seems has seems to have fallen on on Solomon Gaminiak, so that's gonna be a stoppage as the snitch is down. So Dan Marvich is really taking a beating here as a snitch. That's the second time he's been floored today. So it's 90 all as Northern Lights through Austin Wallace connecting with Salehini, tying the game there on the left hoop. So amidst the chaos of the snitch, Northern Lights have fought their way back into this. And now both teams really gunning for the snitch. Porter Bertram just waiting in the wings there for his chance at Dan Marovich. You can see him there in the background. Porter Bertram has pulled Dan Marovich earlier today. This year just ends. Set score is 160, 90 apiece here. So that, so is that going to be a yellow card? Nah, no, it's not going to be a yellow card. Sounds like they're not going to be calling. Oh, you don't think they're going to be calling? Uh, I just found out, so that's all he has to do. So, Fiona Ruddle is now on that's exactly to see what I tried to as Gaminiak comes off. Yeah, I yeah. It is Ian Quincy here with the quaffle. Blanchard approaching Danica Lou. 
He doesn't take the beat there. But here is Porter Bertram, and he is the seeker that pulled Dan Marvich earlier a trade there. And now here comes Matt Williams all the way through for the flush. So with no beaters around, Utah's driving offense is certainly going to be a big threat. Porter Bertram here facing off with Drew Satorius. And both the Seekers really fighting for it now. Bertram being body checked by Satorius. Ryan, is there a zoom on this? So this Seeker battle has really embodied the spirit of this match. Very physical, very intense, and still without a satisfying conclusion on either side. Avalanche up 10-9. to nine. Seekers ready to go again. A quick beat there by Malloy on Porter Bergeron. Satorius now alone time here with Dan Marovich. Meanwhile, Austin Wallace with the quaffle, escorted up by Jake Malloy, who is forcing Porter Bertram off to the side of the pitch away from the snitch so northern lights operating without control blanchard and malloy against bong and danica lu so malloy really making bertram think about his approach to the snitch as satorius continues to get time one on one with marovich back to wallace pass over his head scooped up by matt williams who who shoulders into wallace and is quickly beat so a potential fast break there interrupted by a crucial beat there by Northern Lights and Satorius again with an opportunity to catch the snitch here and take the lead again for Northern Lights. It is 10 goals to 9 in favor of Utah Avalanche and Satorius from the ground still fighting his way against Marovic. Can he do it? So Salehini back behind hoops to Fiona Ruddle, who dishes back to Austin Wallace. Wallace shaking and spinning around back to Fiona Ruddle, and the snitch tail is off. And Drew Satorius giving it his all over here on the snitch. So was it a catch? So we'll see what the ref decision is, but if good, Northern Lights will be back in the lead. <laughs> Drew Satorius putting everything on the line. Yeah, I mean, like, here's the thing, like, the even that lights have are really good. Yeah. Uh, they just don't have many of them. And the catch is good. So Northern Lights with the catch here. Drew Satorius getting the pull on Dan Marovich. And that is going to be really big here as Northern Lights takes a 125 to 100 lead. The set score is 160. So Northern Lights with four goals to go. They do not have the quaffle here. It's Matt Williams in possession for Utah Avalanche. But Avalanche operating without control here with Vong and Danica Liu. Fiona Ruddle pressing all the way up the pitch. Just getting in the face of Williams and Williams. So two Williams passing back and forth. The tiki taka there from the Williams is and it continues to happen as as Matt Williams now finds Katie Williams. So three passes to three different Williamses, but unfortunately only finding Austin Wallace, who takes the ball up the pitch with speed to Stevenson. But no, Michael Vong right there on hand to beat him out. Looked like there was a jersey call on that play, but I heard that there's no call there. Michael Vong having the awareness to see Stevenson's cut and making the beat. So George Williams trying to get Avalanche back in this game. Then they're only down by 25. It's, it seems like the lead has changed back and forth, back and forth throughout the entire game. And here we are with Northern Lights after the snitch catch. Oh, Saltzman catching Vong's beat. Now, Saltzman again with the catch. Saltzman beating out George Williams. 
David Saltzman absolutely wrecking the Utah Avalanche beaters. He now trades Wyatt Verscher, who just caught the snit. No, who had not just caught the snitch, but is in at keeper, now scores on the right hoop, pushing the Northern Lights lead to 135 to 100. Northern so, Lights only three to go here. Still six for Avalanche in order to win. Adam Cyril in at chaser as the Lou's now take the field. Nathan and Danica in at beater. This game is definitely not over, even though Lights seemingly has the momentum. Saltzman beating Cyril. Oh my God. Saltzman all the way up field tapping out Williams. Everyone on Avalanche is beat. But Andrew Stevenson can't get the goal to go. George Williams recovering with some style, but I. Everyone on Avalanche there is beat out by David Saltzman. It absolutely it's taking anything, over. I thought it was definitely no good. David Saltzman blowing up everyone on Utah Avalanche there, but Northern Lights cannot get the finish to go. Avalanche has an incredible tough defense, and they've been very good today at blocking a lot of shots. Ray Taylor in at beater. The Williams is trying to find the connection that they had before. <laughs> Matt Williams is being wrapped up there, passing it off to Cyril, primary beater here. As back to Matt Williams. Williams all the way through. Malloy can't hit the beat. And when you can't beat out Utah's driving players, that is the result as Matt Williams takes it all the way to the hoop for the goal. So that's going to be 135 to 110 in favor of Northern Lights. Hey, Northern Taylor Lights with three Justin, to go as Taylor. Drew Unrau on with David Saltzman. A very strong beater pairing here facing off against Ray Taylor and Nathan Liu. Unrau beating out Ray Taylor. Lou does not hit his beat. Back to Salehini. Cyril, the ball taken right out of her hands. Cyril, the primary beater, scoring as if he was a natural chaser in there for Utah Avalanche. 135 to 120, Cyril with the goal. So now Northern Lights pressing. Taylor misses his beat, and now Unrau and Saltzman will recover control. Packer, can you get so Unrau appealing for an AR call, but he just gets beat instead. So recovering control now is Utah Avalanche as Solomon Gaminiak now trying to find the breakthrough. Every goal is so crucial. Gaminiak dodges the beat from Ray Taylor, but his shot, but their shot does not go off the top of the rim and out. George Williams recovering. And every possession lost here is extremely important because these teams are more than capable of scoring quickly and Utah more so than others as their driving offense has been very potent so far this tournament. Lou beating out a Northern Lights chaser. Cyril, oh! He still wiped the ball from the ground and threw it through for the flush. So Adam Cyril is down, but that was a truly great goal. We'll pan away from that, but Adam Cyril, who is now on his feet, which is a great sight to see, beating Drew Satorius to the ball. And now we have a tie game again. So just after Northern Lights caught the snitch, and it is an ice cream truck. To, yes. Uh, 130 to 100 point lead. Avalanche has stormed back in this with some tremendous defense and a couple of fast breaks. So Adam Cyril, who is, I believe, on the second line of beaters for Utah Avalanche, has come in at Chaser. So that is a good goal with no further calls, but I think Austin Wallace is being either subbed out or... I think it was kind of the way they switched the green, but I think... I, oh yes, I believe he is subbing. So here we go with Drew Satorius. Adam Cyril with two really important goals here, single-handedly bringing Utah Avalanche back into this game. Joe Blanchard facing off with Ray Taylor and Nathan Liu. Taylor now pressing Drew Satorius 
The shot to Heaney now, that is good. The dish and the quick improvisation from Drew Satori is finding Heaney for the goal. That is really big. Northern Lights, 145 to 130 holding the advantage a very slim one at that and utah looking to answer a very hard beat there on gaminiac there and i think that will be a, a head beat so Ninety-seven for yeah, and that's gonna be going to the box and going to the box for a head beat. That is, and the quaffle is turned over. That is huge. That is huge. Any beater penalties this late and this this close? They are down a beater. Utah Avalanche with a catastrophic play. There is now. There's only one beater back on defense. Andrew Tita as Ray Taylor is in the box for a head beat. Soleil Heaney with the quaffle. Blanchard, the cold block there with no bludgers. Drew Satorius looking to go. Oh, but George Williams swats it out of the air. And Williams recovers the quaffle. What an incredible Let's go, George! hit on that ball. What would have been an easy score for the Whites if that, uh, if that pass had just been three inches higher. We talked about how much of a force George Williams was on defense when he was in the penalty box. And when he's on the field, this is what you get. A really staunch defender. And he can shake off some hits too. He passes it off to Ana Christina Malloy right there. Bertram behind the hoops. Can Bertram get around Malloy? Back to Christina. And a, a beat that hits the Northern Lights keeper. And now Gaminiak, oh, the missed beat. Gaminiak. Easy as can be as Utah Avalanche is down a beater and now Ray Taylor can safely rejoin. So now Northern Lights just one goal away. But Utah Avalanche has shown time and time again this game that they have the tenacity to come back. Let's see if they can do that. But Northern Lights is pressing very far up the pitch. Gaminiak picking up the quaffle. Right now, they've only got one thing on their mind, and that's scoring this last goal. And if Solomon Gaminiak has the ball in their possession, this is going to be a big drive. Only one bludger right now on defense, and that's Anthony Snap, if I can see that correctly. So this will be very challenging for Avalanche, but we know how strong of a defense they can put up at times. So we'll see if they're able to prolong this game a little bit more and perhaps even get themselves back into the game. So, uh, been, so it looks like the avalanche keeper, Ian Quincy, is going to be off broom, having been beat. Porter Bircham close to the hoops, oh, the on quaffle. broom. And... What's really important right now is who has the quaffle because if Northern Lights has it, it's going to be this is this could be the drive that decides the game right here. Northern Lights one goal away from victory here. The quaffle is on the ground, so this is going to be really interesting. Oh, but the Avalanche chasers off broom. Solomon Gaminiak now looking to end things. Back to Wallace. Wallace, the no look again to Stevenson. Stevenson slowing the pace. No, it's Mendelssohn rather, but Mendelssohn passing it off to Wallace again. Wallace, cross field, Gaminiak. Oh yeah. That's a good goal right there. Only question is whether they were beat before. And it seems Northern Lights Absolutely. shining bright in this really tightly contested game, catching the snitch, taking victory here in a match that will certainly be replayed later on in a playoff match. So this is this was a huge game, and Northern Lights remains undefeated, two and zero. Oh. Utah Avalanche dropped to one and one on the day, and Northern Lights prevailing here in 
I think the game of the day so far. Absolutely. I am really excited to see what these teams have in store for us the rest of the day and the rest of the tournament tomorrow. Northern Lights certainly seems like the team to beat right now. Even with a smaller roster, they have come out ready to play, and they are looking like the favorites right now. They are on track to go into bracket play as the number one seed. I think this victory over Avalanche definitely gives them a real advantage in doing that. And their previous win coming over Aftershocks, that uh, gets them to 2-0. Their remaining games will be against Fog and Riptide. So stay tuned to see how those games turn out and see whether Northern Lights can keep it going. Next game's for Avalanche. Let's see. So the next game on tap is going to be Aftershock against Fog. And here we are, Shannon Ong and Alex Russell signing off from a very, very exciting match. Northern Lights prevailing over Utah Avalanche by a score of 165 to 130. So more to come here from the Western Championship Cup out here in Torrance. And we will be right back with the next match San Francisco Fog against Los Angeles Aftershock, a heated rivalry and definitely a match to tune into. So we'll be back and signing off now and hope to catch you on the other side.